Here's everything you need to know about chaos magic and nexus beings in the MCU. Can you believe it, folks? The WandaVision finale is here at long last, and we will definitely get answers to all of our burning questions. I mean, literally all of them. And if you don't know what questions I'm talking about, well, you didn't watch yesterday's episode of Nerdist News, and you should change that ASAP. And if you're watching this after the WandaVision finale, I mean, how crazy was it when the aerospace engineer turned out to be Reed Richards' friend Mephisto, or how Jimmy Woo was actually Ultron all along? What did you say? And folks, we don't have a finale theory for you today, so we do want to dive into two of the most important aspects of both WandaVision and the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm talking about chaos magic and nexus beings. Beginning with 2011's Thor, magic has been a crucial part of the MCU experience, gaining prominence in 2016's Doctor Strange and reaching its apex in WandaVision. Marvel's magic users have never been more important, and now they are literally reshaping the fabric of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in ways that none of us could have anticipated way back when. Now, before we go any further, quick obligatory spoiler warning, we're going to be talking about what's happened in WandaVision thus far, and particularly the events of Episode 8. So if you haven't seen it yet, make like Wanda Maximoff and find the nearest Buick on out of here. All right, let's get into it, shall we? So magic in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is a fascinating subject because it's both been very well defined and it remains rather nebulous to the average viewer unless you really dig into it. Your ancestors called it magic and you call it science. Well, I come from a place where they're one and the same thing. Okay, first of all, Thor, that's kind of BS. As we've seen, magic in the MCU is capable of making New York City cosplay as the movie Inception, it can transmute objects before our very eyes, and it can even transport people halfway across the planet for up to 30 minutes at a time. I have been falling for 30 minutes! WandaVision, though, has introduced us to what is indisputably the most powerful magic in both the comics and the MCU. James E. Wu. FBI. No, James Entertainment Woo, I'm sorry. While that is quite impressive, I am talking about chaos magic, which is at the core of Wanda's powers in the MCU. It's an extremely powerful, extremely rare branch of magic that lets Wanda alter the fabric of reality and bend it to her will. As we learn in Avengers 502 and 503, chaos magic is so rare, Doctor Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme himself, didn't even believe it existed. In WandaVision, Agatha Harkness reveals that Wanda is a being believed to be a myth, someone known as THE Scarlet Witch, which is Wanda's comic book name transformed here into something that feels more akin to a title. Maybe that is something given to someone who happens to be a Nexus being, which we will get to in just a little bit. Now, as we saw in Episode 8, Wanda has had latent magical abilities her entire life, using a probability hex to save her and her brother's lives when a bomb crashed through their roof in Sokovia. And during her time with Hydra, we saw Wanda's powers get greatly expanded and enhanced by an encounter with the Mind Stone. We saw the true extent of the Mind Stone's augmentation, though, when Wanda goes cryo Ken times 10 in Westview, completely transforming the town into a sitcom paradise. Wanda makes a house out of thin air and conjures a version of the Vision from sheer nothingness. Unfortunately for the citizens of Westview, Wanda neither has full training or full control of her chaos magic, and her emotional state seems to dictate the ways in which it reacts. I mean, case in point, Wanda's grief created Westview, but her anger significantly expands it. In the comics, Wanda trains under Agatha Harkness to learn how to Agatha harness her powers, but here, Agatha seems to mostly view Wanda as this living pack of gushers just bursting with magical energy. And speaking of Agatha, in Episode 8, she reveals that Wanda's chaos magic means that she is capable of spontaneous creation. But that said, even chaos magic seems to have its limits. For example, when Vision tries to leave the Hex, he is nearly obliterated because his essence is bound to the complex weave of chaos magic spells that Wanda has placed over Westview. That said, Wanda clearly has not tapped the bottom of her well of power, and given that we know we are heading into the multiverse of madness, anything is possible in regards to Wanda and chaos magic, which is fitting, especially if you look at its comic book origins. In the comics, chaos magic is created by the Elder God Kithon, a being of primordial evil, and it lets the user rewrite the very fabric of existence, which is obviously pretty dangerous. Wanda can use it because Kithon marked her at birth as a potential vessel for him to one day possess, which in turn imbued her with some of his power. In Wanda's case, this culminated in the deaths of several Avengers during the Avengers Disassembled arc, the transformation of the entire world during the House of M storyline, and what amounted to the effective genocide of an entire people when she erased most of the world's mutant population with three words, no more mutants, no one tell Quicksilver. As we've speculated previously, Kathon could be connected to that mysterious spellbook in Agatha's basement, which may or may not be the Darkhold, and if you want to know more about that, boy do I have a video for you. 
But regardless, Wanda seems like our most obvious route into the larger multiverse because, as the Ancient One explains in Doctor Strange, in the MCU, magic users harness energy drawn from other dimensions of the multiverse to cast spells, to conjure shields and weapons, to make magic. So, every time that Wanda uses her chaos magic, she is effectively drawing in magic and energy from the multiverse. And as we've seen with Westview, she is drawing on immense amounts of energy to maintain her creation. You're even running illusions miles away at the edge of town! But remember as well what the Ancient One told Bruce Banner in Avengers Endgame. The Infinity Stones create what you experience as the flow of time. Remove one stone and that flow splits. Now this may benefit your reality, but my new one, not so much. In this new branched reality, without our chief weapon against the forces of darkness, our world may be overrun. Millions will suffer. And look, that is the outcome the Avengers fought to prevent, and largely did, in the main MCU timeline during Endgame, but clearly, this meddling with timelines, the creation of multiple branching timelines, that's gonna have a cascading effect after the further damage done during the events of WandaVision. Even more important, though, is Wanda's status as a Nexus being an anchor point for this reality in the context of the larger multiverse. And this was heavily implied by the Nexus antidepressant commercial from Episode 7, a, quote, unique antidepressant that works to anchor you back to your reality or the reality of your choice, end quote. First established in the pages of Avengers West Coast 60 through 62, Wanda is one who belongs equally to all possible timelines, all realities, and divergences. And as we explored in our previous Kang the Conqueror theory video, this is especially important because this story arc touches on so many of the details and plot points that have already been well established on WandaVision. And according to Scarlet Witch number 4, Nexus beings are also nodes of mystic energy for their respective worlds. That means that maybe if Wanda meddles too much with this reality or the multiverse, it could potentially affect how people like Doctor Strange interact with their magic. Because, folks, we are heading into the multiverse of madness, and Wanda is someone who's responsible for creating new divergences in these timelines and realities, and that is going to place her squarely in the proverbial crosshairs of all manner of people, some good, some evil, some neutral. And as we've speculated countless times, there are plenty of malevolent beings in the MCU and the Marvel Universe who'd probably want to control Wanda for their own nefarious ends, like Cathan or Dormammu or Nightmare or Mephisto, the list goes on and on. But consider as well that a purportedly neutral organization like the Time Variance Authority, the multiversal custodians who we're going to meet in the upcoming Loki series who are responsible for maintaining order within the multiverse, might want a word or two with Wanda, because Wanda is going to be throwing the multiverse into disarray, so she's almost definitely going to pop up on their radar, unless someone like Stephen Strange can get to her first. But before any of that happens, we're going to see exactly how much damage Wanda did to the multiverse when the multiverse sets its sights on Peter Parker in Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm sorry, you're saying there's a multiverse? Regardless, we are going to get some answers to our myriad questions in the WandaVision finale, which we'll also break down for you in detail here and on Nerdist.com. But in the meantime, folks, tell us what do you think is going to happen with Wanda after WandaVision? How would you like to see magic and the multiverse affect the MCU moving forward? Close-up magic. Let us know in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com.